question for you. Is it time to bring back mask mandates? Hmm. Um. Is it time to bring back mask mandates? Yes, for sure. Don't let our guards down. No, I don't think so. I'm gonna be honest, man. Having a mask sucks. I think it'd be hard to go back at this point. Public transit, yeah. definitely. Oh, I'm just sick. That's why I have mine on. Well, I I'm a physician, and that's a tough one. If you want to wear a mask, then you should wear a mask. Uh, no. I guess it is time to bring it back. If the government, government enforce it, good for me. Yeah. <laughs> Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health is expected to recommend a return to public masking Monday, but will stop short of a mask mandate. Canada's top doctor is recommending masks as well. Children's hospitals are overwhelmed with a triple whammy of flu, RSV and COVID. And many doctors are increasingly alarmed about a health care system in crisis. So is it time to bring back mask mandates? Let's talk about that with two physicians. Dr. Barry Pecos is the York Region Medical Officer of Health and Dr. Fahad Razak is the former head of the Ontario Science Table. Both of them join me from Toronto. Now, I, I know you both agree that masking helps slow down COVID transmission, but you have different views on requiring people to wear them. Dr. Razak, wh why, why do you support bringing back mandates? Yeah, first of all, I'll say that this is obviously a remarkable, con remarkably controversial issue. So I, I say that with caution that I believe that it's now the time to require masks in crowded essential indoor settings, places like transit, grocery stores, or healthcare settings. And it's because of the degree of crisis within the system right now. If you listen to the CEOs, the frontline healthcare workers at our pediatric hospitals, they have not seen a surge of virus like this at any time in their careers. And especially now we're seeing this surge early in the year, which is worrying because we're just entering the respiratory virus in, uh, season. Part of this probably is an accumulation of children who haven't been exposed over the first couple of years of the pandemic. But the point is we have this crisis now and masking does seem to broadly uh, restrict and, and reduce the transmission of these respiratory viruses. And that's why many people, including myself, think it's time to consider it. But to repeat something you said, even your advocacy of a mask mandate is in limited areas. So you were saying basically crowded indoor public spaces? That's right. That's right. I think we're far enough into the pandemic now that if people want to go to restaurants or gyms, they should be able to do that. It's about the areas that you have to go to. So parts that are essential to day-to-day -day living. I think that's where we need to protect people as much as possible. I'll say further that many people were also swayed by a really important study that came out of Boston, published in the New England Journal this week, that also showed an important protective effect within public schools. I would say considering that we're really dealing with a pediatric crisis, that should be part of the consideration at this point. Now, that is a further step, at least start with the other essential public places. Uh, Dr. Pecos, what about having the mandates at least in those limited, again, public, crowded indoor spaces? Yeah, so I think Dr. Razek and I really agree on almost everything there. And, and throughout the pandemic, I think both of us and all public health physicians have recognized that, you know, there's the, the public health and the medical science, and then there's the social and political science. And so what I, I, I undoubtedly agree that what we need to do right now is to move ourselves and, and the entire population closer towards you know uh, everybody wearing a mask and there's a variety of ways of doing that the real challenge now of course is unlike this this um you know the place where we've been until now for the past couple of months where you know if you're at high risk you know you can choose to wear a mask those who are at higher risk are those under age five or under age four who you know have trouble wearing it are going to be reluctant to do so there are some you know educational harms and issues you know and, and the whole you know big more controversial issue around school so it is more challenging and and you know the faster we can move closer towards everybody masking i think the better off we'll be and and you know what we're going to hear hopefully in ontario monday is going to move us towards that so we are still in the midst of a pandemic. There still is a, you know, a high degree of COVID transmission. And in some cases, that, that turns out to have serious consequences. And Dr. Razak, you, you, you make an interesting point about how widespread use of masks kind of remind people of, of the, the risk that, uh, that many people face. Tell us more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I, and I want to point out that the benefit of masks at this point, people are talking about it broadly, not just about COVID, but remember that the acute stressors within the pediatric sector right now are non-COVID viral illness, things like RSV and influenza increasingly. The seriousness of, of the pandemic or the situation that we're in right now, I think is important to consider. And, and mask mandates are part of signaling that importance. The reason why that's really important is 
the uptake of vaccines has been extremely low for booster vaccines, and it's still lower than we'd like for the influenza vaccine. Part of the signaling of the seriousness of the pandemic, I think, is also saying, look, we've reached the point of crisis where we need to have masks on in these places. We don't like it, but we have to do it. And the hope is that we'll also enhance the messaging around vaccines. Now, that's not the direct reason to do it, but I think many people do hope that the messaging at least will become more coherent. And Dr. Pekis, we've got about a minute left, but if not a mask mandate, uh, any suggestions on other ways to remind people of the, the continuing risk of COVID? I mean, I think it really is, as Dr. Ruzik said, that, that we, we need to uh, get people vaccinated. And, and actually, you know, I would differ in the sense that I think those people who are at highest risk, older people, have really rolled up their sleeves and gotten the bivalent, really. But the problem is it's everybody else who truly isn't at that high risk of, of severe illness, but they all need to get vaccinated with the bivalent and flu in order to protect the overall population. You know, back where we were over a year and a half ago with everybody getting that vaccine, both for themselves, but also for everybody else. So other than masking, really, that's what we need to do. So those people who don't think they're at highest risk, go get your flu vaccine and your bivalent. I just got both of mine. Uh, I'm not particularly at risk because of my age, but I think it's incredibly important. Maybe a quick answer from both of you on this final point. Uh, we know masks are contentious. It quickly becomes polarized. Uh, maybe I'll start with you, Dr. Razak. Uh, uh, any suggestions on how we can have meaningful conversations about mandates without it becoming personal? Look, very, very difficult at this point in the pandemic. And I'm very sympathetic to public health leadership that are worried about furthering that discord. I'll say that two important public polls in the last week suggest that between 70 to 80 percent of Canadians are willing to put on that mask to protect the system. I think that's very important. There are some people who are dug in against it. It's hard to do it, but I still think that you have to go ahead. And Dr. Pekis, what about trying to have a, 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 an unemotional conversation about this? You know, certainly, I think we're in a, a great position in Canada that it is less controversial here than in many other places. And to be honest, as a, as a medical officer of health who might be enacting this kind of mandate, it's not that much of a challenge for me. It's a challenge for those public and private organizations, businesses, schools, you know, other places that need to enforce it with about 20 percent, which is still pretty low, who are going to be, you know, I will not put on a mask. It's very hard for us to put people, businesses, organizations in a position like that. So that is a real challenge. And as we move that social norm now over the next days to weeks, hopefully that'll become easier for everyone. Well, a good starting point is people like you coming forward and being willing to talk about it on the program. And I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day.